on the streets of Eastleigh, a Somali neighborhood in the Kenyan capital, public life carries on as normal. But in private, many Somali women are carrying a much heavier load. They have been raped or tricked into sex with men who record the abuse. For the women and their families, the videos are evidence of what is considered a permanent stain. Being seen naked can have them cast out or even killed. We spoke with more than a dozen Somali women around the world. A very brave few have agreed to tell their story on camera. Nimro, not her real name, is one of them. Her ordeal began when she was just 15. Her religious teacher introduced her to a wealthy man who told her he was looking for a wife. Nimro is from a poor family and that made her vulnerable. She says he took her to a hotel and convinced her to sleep with him. Later, Nimro refused to meet him, and that is when he revealed the recordings. He threatened to share the footage with her classmates, and it's the threat of making the video public that is keeping women like Nim'a silent and isolated. They are blackmailed into further sexual exploitation, but Nim'a went to her family for help. Then she found out she was pregnant and was forced to stay with him. At 15, the marriage wasn't legal, it was a sham, and he didn't want the child. After the abortion, she says the abuse continued for several months. He locked her in a house and recorded more videos. Nimro fell pregnant again, but this time, refused to have an abortion. She escaped the house and later gave birth to a baby boy. At a hospital in Nairobi, I met Fatima, a women's rights campaigner. How big is the you know, sexual blackmailing problem? It's a problem, it's a big problem. It's a problem that we face every day. She helps many Somali women with medical care and counseling, but she says they are too afraid to report the crime. If you are a woman and you have been seen naked, the community will curse you. Even sometimes maybe you will be killed. Nobody will wait you to explain yourself what happened. Because the first thing that you will be seen is you naked as a woman. Fatima says many women are prevented from seeking justice outside the community. It's the Somali elders who decide. They will always say that the women, you finish this thing, let's not take it to court because we are Muslim, we are Somalis, we are not supposed to embarrass each other. She says women who do go to police often find their cases dropped because of corruption. Across the border in Somalia, the chances of justice are even more slim. Decades of civil war have shredded the courts as well as the clan-based system of justice centered on elders. Sexual crimes go unpunished. Hani was left with six children when her husband died. She remarried, thinking her new husband would provide financial support and protection. Instead, he started abusing her. Kelly gained a man, the water, the Halegus, the Gibbous, or Maria, the Bernard, the Bualogist, and Incas, 
naga igu horay aniga oo guursaday oo waliba kuwa ilmo u dhalay ay ku jireen oo ku sameeyay intaasi wuxu ugu sameeyay in ka badan oo ku sameeyo dhibaata she says her husband beat her regularly and when she threatened to leave he drugged her raped her and made several videos of the assault some of the videos showed his face honey thought she had strong evidence and nothing left to lose so she went to the police maalinti a aniga dacweeye ee la soo qabtay saldhig boon dheer lagu xir telefoonkiisa laga qaade telefoonkiisa markii laga qaade waxa ku jireen gabdho ool soddon afartan dhan oo Soomaali ah intaasna oo meher been inta u sameeyay oo fiidiyaal ka duubayna ku jireen that was five years ago since then he has been detained and released several times but has not been convicted. She believes his family made a deal with the police. Hani refused. A year later, he published the videos. After her video was shared, Hani lost custody of her children. Her first husband's family said she was unfit to raise them. Over the course of our investigations, we have identified dozens of channels on WhatsApp and Telegram set up for the purpose of sharing and selling these videos. Some are run by UK and US phone numbers and can reach up to 60,000 subscribers before they are shut down. Many channels collect videos that were originally published to social media to shame women. Then they charge subscribers for the convenience of having a steady stream of videos in one place. Multiple sources told me that there are men in Somalia who are paid to rape women and record videos. One of the most notorious of these rapists for hire assaulted Leila a teenager from Mogadishu. We have changed her name. Somebody began to text her, saying they knew her. She agreed to meet. Layla believes the men were paid by a boy from the neighborhood who she had rejected. As an act of revenge, he had given them her phone number and commissioned the assault, like hiring hitmen, but for rape. <laughs> While she was being assaulted, the man pointed the camera right at her face. He gave a running commentary about how beautiful and innocent she looked, and then he moved the camera down as he raped her. <laughs> After they left Layla by the side of the road, she says the man kept messaging her and tried to blackmail her into meeting him again by threatening to publish the videos. Eventually, her family saw the videos. Layla says her mother died of a heart attack.
Layla's face and phone number were posted in large Somali Facebook groups. The video was also sold in private Telegram channels for up to $20 per download. Layla got married, but her husband saw the videos and left her. Layla's abuser has been arrested and let go several times because of his family connections. Hani's abuser is still free in Mogadishu. Nimo's abuser is still threatens her. She is raising her baby alone. The stories of three women out of possibly thousands. Yet no man in Somalia has yet been convicted for these crimes, even though the video evidence is for sale.